All right, guys, it's time for Thursday Thoughts. This is Jerry Fetta, CEO and founder of the Wealth Dynamics brand. And I'm gonna be talking to you today about the FTX fraud that occurred last year. Right now, there's a lot going on with this. I wanna to talk to you about, you know, kind of what's happening, my thoughts on it. But watch to the end of the video. I did a video last week about Taylor Swift, okay? And, and how she's very smart with her business, re-recording all her music. Actually, she came up again in this story and I wanna share with you what she did that was extremely wise and why this is something you should be doing with all your investments. Make sure you watch to the end. All right guys, welcome back to Thursday Thought. So this whole FTX thing, first off, I'm gonna go ahead and just toot my horn, I told you so with the crypto thing, right? It did not replace the US dollar, it basically turned into what's known as a security, which means it's the same as a stock. Okay, the government treats it the same, taxes it the same, regulates it almost the same. Uh, and recently with FTX last year, which is a giant crypto company, um, they committed fraud on a very high level, like one of the largest fraud cases in US history. Um, and so you had you know, people like Tom Brady, people like Kevin O'Leary that were attached to this, endorsing the brand, you know, funneling people into it, and it turned out to be fraudulent. So you know, a lot of these celebrities and athletes and professional you know, uh, musicians and artists, they're experiencing obviously the negative backlash on their brands, but they're also facing lawsuits. Right, so for example, Shaq, I love Shaq. I was a basketball fan growing up. I loved watching Shaq play. Uh, I was a, a, a poor kid, so I could only afford the Shaq shoes. Today I got my, my Jordans on, right? I, I've leveled up my status on the shoe game, but I could only afford you know, the $15 Shaq shoes that pay less, and so I loved Shaq. Okay, Shaq was my boy, okay? So Shaq got involved in promoting FTX, and so right now even Shaquille O'Neal is being pursued with lawsuits, uh, you know, people that are, are trying to go after him for saying, hey, you told people to invest. Right now, here's the problem. When you're investing in something, you have to look at the word invest. How is it being used? There's many different definitions, right? And so if something is an investment, that's actually different than a speculation. An investment is a real asset that has real value that's based on earnings or intrinsic value. It's got a real track record and generally it does produce some kind of income in and of itself. That's a good investment, right? Now, if something doesn't have real objective value, meaning it's subjective, there's not actually a real asset or anything intrinsic behind it, AKA crypto, um, that becomes a speculation. It doesn't produce income. Its pricing is based on the market and what their opinions are and what they think is gonna happen. And that's why it's speculative, right? And so we stay away from speculation, right? Last year, I lost a good chunk of money because I was in a fund that turned out to be speculating. Now, speculation is the second cousin of fraud. Right? When someone's speculating and they start losing money, right, or they maybe make an unethical decision, typically they're gonna cover it up with fraud. And the reason why is it's very hard to track. Right? I learned this lesson the hard way last year. So let me tell you like with, with a, a real estate deal, for example. Let's say you buy a real estate property and there's a rental income and there's you know, deposits in the bank and you can see the appraised value of the property. That's all third party information. It's objective and it's true and it's verifiable. So it's harder for someone to commit fraud on real estate because there's only a couple ways they can do it, right? They can you know, maybe misreport the numbers, right? I would see on the appraiser, I would be able to check that and see, no, 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 the actual appraised value is, is this, not this. They can steal my cash flow, right? But I would see that there's bank statements, there's paper trails, that's very easy for me to go look at, right? They can, they can misappropriate funds. Again, I would see that. I'd look for variances in my numbers. I could see that on my credit card or bank statements and I'd see monies going out that I didn't authorize. Right, um, and, and those are really the main ones. You sure could have tenant issues where they steal stuff, but again, let's say they steal pipes. I'm gonna go in there and see there's a hole in the wall and the pipes are missing, right? They're not gonna get away with it for long, right? And I'm also insured. So that's an investment and a lot of the fraud protection is verifiable. I can check these things. Let's flip it over to crypto, okay? What's the growth based on? Who knows? Okay, what did, what did people blog about on Reddit? What did Elon Musk say on Twitter? Like those are the things that make crypto go up and down. So there's nothing to say like, okay, if I go hire a bunch of celebrities and I pay them with money I'm collecting from crypto, which again, it's not producing income. So the money I got came from the other guy that put it in first, right? And I'm paying celebrities to bring hype and attention. It drives the price of the crypto up. It doesn't actually mean the crypto's valid. It just means it has a lot of attention and it rides the wave of attention up. So if I get Shaquille O'Neal and Kevin O'Leary and Tom Brady and all these people talking about it, sure, I can drive the price up, right? But it doesn't mean I'm not committing fraud in the background. There's no income, so there's no income statement to track, 
right? Like it literally is, you give me money, I'm gonna trade that money in that from that you're giving me, I'm gonna give you now an invisible digital token and I'm gonna tell you it's worth this much based on what other people think and how much hype it has in the marketplace. It doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't perform a service. It doesn't solve a problem for anyone right now, right? So that's speculation. When I speculate, I put myself at risk for loss and fraud. When I invest, I limit the risk and I limit the risk for fraud, okay? So if you were in FTX, I didn't do FTX. Now, I'm not any better. I invested in, in a fund called Daily Bread Fund. I lost my ass on it last year, right? They committed fraud also, lesson learned, okay? So, so I'm telling you from experience, I know what it's like to lose money, but here's how you prevent it from happening. There's one person in this story, okay? One person in this story so far that I really admire for her business skill and savvy, and that's Taylor Swift. Okay, and you guys know Taylor Swift. I did a video on her last, last week. She was in Tampa. She sold out the arena. She's re-recording her album. She's killing it. And she started from the ground up, right? And so Taylor apparently was approached with the opportunity to endorse FTX. They were actually willing to pay her $100 billion. Okay, guys, that's a lot of money, right? So, or sorry, $100 million, not $100 billion. $100 million, that's a lot of money. And even though it's not a billion, I know I said billion the first time. It'd be cool if it was billion. And I think Taylor would still have been smart enough to turn that down, but $100 million to endorse FTX. Okay, Taylor asked one question. She said, can you prove to me that FTX is not an unregistered security? Okay, my mind was blown. Now her attorneys probably told her to ask this, this question, but you know, when you get into the world of unregistered securities, you get into the world of very low transparency, very low accountability, and the fund I lost money in last year was an unregistered security. Okay, I don't like unregistered securities anymore. So what is an unregistered security? Registered security, a security is an investment. It's a stock, a bond, a mutual fund, a fund of some sort. Registered means they went to the SEC, they, which is the government agencies for investing. They said, hey, let's go, let's go start a fund. We wanna do everything. We're gonna go through audits. We're gonna you know, basically you know, take our pants down, turn our head and cough and give you all the data you need to prove that we're legit. Right? And so the government really inspects every nook and cranny of it. There's very high compliance. I used to be a financial advisor, and so that's how I know you get audited regularly. You have compliance regularly. So a registered security, that's the one that you're gonna have in your retirement account. Right? That's why Fidelity is offering it and Vanguard is offering it because it's registered. Okay, they, they know it's been checked out. Is it good? Probably not. It's not the best way to invest, but at least you know what's there. Right? It's kind of like going to you know, like McDonald's. Like You know it's not real meat. It's not mystery meat. You can go on their website, probably find out what it is, and it's not good for you and you can see all the calories now, but it's better than them getting you know, some liquid pouch sticking it in a blender and not knowing what it is. Right? Now, an unregistered security means they filed a report with the investment uh, committees in the government saying, hey, we're going to do a fund, and the government's like, cool, just don't break the law. We're not going to audit you. You're not accountable, accountable to anyone. You don't have a broker dealer. There's no compliance. There's no regulation other than pay us you know, a fee. You know, and if you break the law, you're gonna pay us another fee and you might go to jail. Okay, did you know you can start an unregistered security fund with 10 grand? You don't have to have a track record at all. Zero track record. You can just go start a private fund as an unregistered security. So Taylor knew if she was gonna get involved with XT, FTX and she was gonna promote it and it was an unregistered security, she would actually be attached to you know, potentially being like an unregistered investment advisor by endorsing it and saying, and put money with FTX. They're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. And it turns out to be an unregistered security. Taylor Swift is now on the hook for, and all of these athletes and, and you know, musicians and artists are potentially on the hook for acting as an unregistered, unlicensed investment advisor. You were referring people to an unregistered security. You did not have a securities license. Therefore, that's a crime. Right, so Taylor's so smart because she asked, can you prove to me that this is not an unregistered security? And FTX couldn't. They couldn't give her the data she needed. She decided not to do the endorsement deal. They pulled out. And this was like in the, in the closing part of it when they were about to do this deal. That's the final questions that Taylor asked. And they said, nope, sorry, we can't. She, she said, cool, keep your 100 million. I want to keep my reputation. I want to keep my business. I want to keep my assets. And I want to keep out of jail. I want to keep out of lawsuits, right? So what's the lesson here? If you're someone that has money, quit looking for new ways to make money when there's proven old ones, right? When I invested in Daily Bread Fund, this was a new way to make money. They were gonna show me 4% monthly returns and all this great stuff, and I was like, well, I'm used to making 10 and 12%. If I can make 40% a year, imagine what that does for my net worth. Imagine what that does for my portfolio. It's new and exciting, right? The real estate, the gold, the silver, the life insurance, right? The life insurance, by the way, I still have my life insurance. That's the one that didn't go. 
right? Those were all the old boring ways. So if you've got money, one of the quickest ways to lose it is looking for new and interesting ideas for investing rather than using old proven ones that there's nothing wrong with them. Nothing ever happened where real estate became a bad idea. Nothing ever happened where gold and silver became a bad idea. Nothing happened where life insurance suddenly became a bad idea. They're all good ideas. But think about it. It's like you're married and you've been married to someone for 50 years and you know that person. Okay, it's a good idea. It's got a track record. But all of a sudden you get distracted and you're like, oh, I want someone younger and newer. Bad idea. Okay, you have a good one. Keep that one. Don't go looking for something else. Right? And so really like it's kind of like in, in, a, in a spousal way cheating on your spouse. When you go looking for new ideas like that, you're cheating on your money. The result isn't good. You're going to pay for it. Right? You're going to get the financial STDs. That's going to happen. Right? That's the losses and the fraud and all the nastiness you don't want to get involved in unless you're like a Taylor Swift. Right? So be like Tay Tay. Ask the right questions. Don't get involved in stuff looking for quick money. And that's my thoughts for today. And by the way, guys, if you want to learn more about investing, come to our In the Arena Bootcamp. It's going to be June 3rd, June 3rd. This is the first Saturday of June, 1 to 7 p.m. The first speaker has been released. It's Mr. Ivan Anz. He runs a family office, youngest family office founder in the world. Ivan started his family office because he lost money speculating on stocks and cryptocurrencies and foreign currencies and now has built it up to multi-millions. And so I want to have you attend, grab your ticket at store.wealthdynamics.com or store.jerryfetta.com, store store.jerryfetta.com, and I'll see you next time.